let's talk about the, the plot of, of this one and where and when. It's a uh, post-apocalyptic book, uh, a cheery little story. It takes place about 70, 80 years in the future from the present. Uh, it involves uh, a, the, the uh, conclusion of a series, escalating series of cataclysmic events, uh, some man-made, some natural, that have essentially destroyed civilization and left uh, pockets of survivors uh, worldwide uh, who have formed uh, their own little uh, communities or families uh, in an effort to survive Usually uh, in, destruction. Usually in sports stadiums or? Yeah, well, you know, sports stadiums seem like they ought to be a good choice. Uh, they feel fortress-like to me. I uh, think New Orleans is the Superdome. I don't know. I, I know just, it. I don't, I'm even reluctant I to go to game. I wonder if the roof is working. <laughs> um, it's, it's, a, it's a case of, uh, of two mindsets. Uh, the mindsets of the compound, what we call the compound people, the ones living in sports stadiums or facilities or the like, uh, are that you need some kind of uh, larger community of, of, of individuals to survive uh, with some kind of order and organization uh, who are in this, some kind of a fortified position. Uh, some kind of a defensible position because of course there's all kinds of bad things there's also the uh, attitude that says you, you if you're not locked away you can't adequately protect yourself uh, particularly against not only the uh, the bad things that are out there uh, prowling the uh, countryside uh, the mutants and the, and the rogue militias and things like that but also the viruses the plagues the poisons the things that have uh, destroyed uh, the air and the earth and the water uh, and made it uh, uh, so likely that you can get sick. So you shut all that out and you don't let anybody in who, uh, who might be in, uh, capable of infecting you. Then you've got the people who don't want to live in that environment and, and say, you know, uh, live free or die. Uh, and they're there and the ones who, are, who either choose to live that way for one reason or another or don't have any choice because the compounds won't take them in. And of course, in Armageddon's Children, one of the main groups of characters that we follow are a group of street kids called the Ghosts. They've named themselves the Ghosts, and they are um, uh, they are castoffs. Nobody wants the street kids. They're orphans. Uh, who knows where they've been? Who knows what kind of diseases they're carrying? Don't let them in. We'll all be better off. Besides, they can't really bring anything to the table if you do let them in. There's a Romeo and Juliet kind of uh, thing happening though between two. two yeah, a compound girl and a street boy, street kid boy. Uh, who uh, had linked up earlier uh, and uh, become attached to each other and then of course the parents of the girl found out and uh, put a stop to it they thought uh, and they're meeting and so now that's uh, Tessa and Hawk and they're meeting clandestinely as the story opens. I like Hawk. He's he's a, a man in a well man boy how old is he? He's 18. He's, he's, the, he's, the, the, he's the leader of the family uh, except for the mother who's 23 uh, and he is uh, uh, a very self-sufficient kid, uh, very uh, uh, driven in what he thinks needs to happen and, um, and in, in his sense of what, what the world is like. Uh, and really the organizer uh, and the central force uh, for, the, for the other members of his little family. There's also another faction running around in the book, and that's uh, elves, mm -hmm. which when I hit it went because uh, I sort of picked it up and, and thought science fiction, science fiction, and, the, and then suddenly bang elves, and mm. I was like, okay, right now I'm not sure where I am. Well, I suppose that the short answer is that uh, this book is the beginning of a series that will link uh, the events of Word and Void with the beginning events of, of the Shannara books, um, and that we're going to move out of this world, which is a world of science, a world of, uh, of power derived from science into a world in which science is no longer uh, an existing power uh, and in which magic has replaced science and, and pretty much operates in the same way which is what the world of the Shannara is and to do that I have to go back to what was described in the Shannara books as the Great Wars the wars of, of power that destroyed the old civilization and go forward over a period of roughly a thousand years to the first council of druids which becomes the beginning of the new world the world of the druids and magic as as the governing force in in the four lands good job on this one i'm looking forward to seeing where it goes oh, thanks very uh, much uh, you've got me believing all right well i'm going to keep trying to keep you in there the book is armageddon's children i've been speaking with the author terry brooks and armageddon's children published by ballantine books